Attorney General William Barr's review of the origins of the Russia investigation reportedly shifting focus to how intelligence agencies determined that Moscow intervened in the 2016 presidential election in an effort to help then-candidate Donald Trump. I want to bring in former Congressman Trey Gowdy. He is former chairman of the House Oversight Committee and former member of the House Judiciary Committee. He is also a former prosecutor and a Fox News contributor. Congressman, it's always a pleasure to see you. Thanks for being here. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. So what is your reaction to this news that, uh, you know, the Democrats keep saying that Russia wanted Donald Trump to win, and now William Barr is looking into it? Is that the right track? Um, it's entirely appropriate, and, and, you know, I think some people would, would, would tell you Russia wanted her to lose, and then in a binary choice, by default, that means he must win. Uh, the intelligence community is always really skittish when people look at their work product. You know, they don't they don't deal in evidence. They don't deal in evidentiary burdens or thresholds. They deal in assessments. Um, and and Maria, you and I can think of some famous examples in the past where their assessments were wrong. So I got a lot of respect for the intelligence community, but no one is above oversight and review and scrutiny. And if Barr wants to look at the evidentiary foundations for this counterintelligence investigation, he should. Yeah, especially since Michael Morell, who was the deputy director of the CIA during the Obama administration, says that John Durham's interest in speaking to the CIA is inappropriate. Yeah, that's what they always say. I mean, that you remember the weapons of mass destruction in Iraq, and then remember the spontaneous reaction to an anti-Muslim video in Libya. That's what Morell told us then, too. You can't go interview the analyst. It'll have a chilling effect. Okay, then, quit using intelligence products in your criminal justice analysis. If, if you don't want us applying a criminal justice analysis to your intelligence work, then quit using it. And I think what we're going to find in 2016 is the intelligence community was providing information to law enforcement that then went into this investigation where some Democrats are calling for Donald Trump to be in prison. So you can't have it both ways. You yeah. can't have a lower standard of scrutiny, but still get your information put into the criminal justice realm. It just, it doesn't work that way. And yet there was some information that actually wasn't presented to the, to the powers that be that were making important decisions. You just heard your former colleague, Devin Nunes, he sent a letter to the head of the FBI on Friday saying, how come we never saw the uh, Kathleen Cavillac notes where she raised her hand and said, Christopher Steele's information is not to be trusted. Yeah, you, 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 you have her uh, assessment, but you also have the FBI's own assessment of Christopher Steele as a source. Have you ever seen that? Have you ever seen the FBI's internal analysis of whether Christopher Steele was reliable? Have you seen the paperwork where he was defrocked as a source because he couldn't follow FBI rules and regulations? Have you seen the exculpatory information mm. as it relates to George Papadopoulos? Here's one, Maria. Have you seen the disparate de defensive debriefings that they gave candidate Clinton versus candidate Trump? And has anyone asked the FBI to explain why they took entirely different tracks with those two debriefings? There's a lot left to be seen by, by you and your viewers. Yeah, and you mentioned something the last time you were with us, which I want to come back to.